بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما so the first method will will try to understand uh, the winter wonderland routing with a separate gateways so this is typically called as a legacy method not really used uh, because there are some limitations and drawbacks we'll see them in the last but to understand the concept of the wlan routing or the routing how the routing works generally this is something really a good option even though it is a legacy option so let's take an example here i got two wlans so i'm going to assume there are two wlans wlan 10 and wlan 20 Of course, in the production scenarios, you may have more than two VLANs. So I'm just using two VLANs to make our job easier. But you can have four, five, six, any number of VLANs depends upon the requirement. So we assume that these two uh, VLANs are already pre-configured, where the ports one and two are assigned in the VLAN ten, and port number three and four are assigned in the VLAN twenty. So let's assume that is already there. So we know how to do that. We did that in the previous sections. Now, in order to forward the packets between the VLANs, we need one layer three device. Now, layer three device is nothing but router. So, either you need a router, or of course, or a layer three switch. So, here in this example, we'll be seeing how we can do that with a router. And with a router, again, there are two options. As I mentioned, we'll be seeing the first option by using a separate gateways. So, I'm going to use a router. So, we need a router because a router is a device which will do routing. which means it will send the packet from one network to another network because logically these two are different networks right even though they are physically sitting in the same lan but logically they are separated logically they are like separate lans uh, separate lans are separate networks so we need a router and of course router is required with two gateways so we need gateways on this interface the router interface we call it as a gateway because gateway is just like the root or the interface from where you can go outside just like let's say this user sitting in my lan uh, wants to access something like internet let's say so something like they want to connect to internet so internet is not in my lan so it is somewhere outside now this pc when this user simply says the packet is sourced from 192.168.1.1 and the destination is a different subnet let's say if he is trying to go to 192.168.2.1 or maybe he is trying to go to yahoo google whatever so logically when these two are in different subnets right they are in different subnets now the pc what it is going to do is it is going to simply forward the packet to the gateway if you configure now the job of this gateway nothing but the packet reaches the router now once it reaches the router the router is going to do routing nothing but it will check the routing table and then forward the packet whether it is here or here depends upon the destination address so probably we'll see a little bit more in depth in routing concepts when we get into routing topics so i'm not getting in you know all the things related to routing so few things i'll cover which are relevant to this particular topic but we have a separate section or a separate you know it's a major part of your course will be covering in the routing as well so we need a gateway so how many gateways we require so we have two vlans which means i need two gateways one gateway for the vlan 10 of course i want for the vlan 20 also now similar way if you have three vlans one more vlan i need one more gateway one more gateway if you have four vlans you need four gateways of course you have five vlans five gateways so this is the drawback because one router with that many interfaces is really not a scalable solution so that's the reason we don't really use this method mostly but to understand the basic uh, routing or vlan routing this is really a good option so this is really a good option to start with so we need a gateway for each vlan of course and every vlan of course you have to assign the ip for that gateway and whatever the ip we give here that must be on the same subnet what we are using here because your lan and your gateway they must be on the same subnet of course that is the prerequisite likewise here i am assigning the ip on this interface from the same subnet what i'm using for the vlan 20 users every pc must be configured as a gateway which means uh, we assign the ip address on the computer if you remember the tabs and then we assign the subnet mask there is an option and then there will be one more option something called gateway the default gateway we have to tell the default gateway is 
192, 168, 100. So this is the option what you will see generally on the computers. Anyway, we'll verify these options when we get into the lab. And finally, we need to make sure that the users of your VLAN as well as the interface which is connecting the gateway should be in the same network or same VLAN, sorry. Same network as well as same VLAN. Why? Because if your port, this port, if the port of the router is in the VLAN 1 and this users is in the VLAN 10, then how it will communicate with the gateway, right? No communication. So you have to make sure that the ports, like in my example, these three ports, port number 1, 2, 10, so all the ports connecting to my end devices, including the port connecting to the gateway should be in the same VLAN. Likewise, port number 3, 4, 11 should be in the same VLAN. So this is like the final configurations we'll be, we'll be doing here.